when the f she get married who the f is that so you mean to tell me she's the hero she get out in eight to ten years and he's the person that actually took her out and he gets life without the possibility of parole so he not the hero at all got it What's up, everybody? It's your girl, B. Octavia. Let me fix myself up. I'm clocking on in. And I have a few things to say about Miss Gypsy Rose. If you do not know me, my name is B. Octavia. I'm 27 years old, and I'm from Washington, D.C. Here on my channel, I like, I like to talk about things that happened in the past as well as recent events. And this one is no different. Now, what I didn't remember is that this happened in 2015. Now, it feel like it don't feel like it's been almost 10 years. It feel like that was like two years ago. Swear to God. I thought that the murder happened in the 90s for some reason. But today we will be talking about Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard. Now, of course, we have seen that Miss Gypsy Rose is out of prison after serving 8 out of 10 years for second degree murder. As a child, she was portrayed to the public as if she was weak, couldn't walk, and dying from cancer. Her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, who can now be proclaimed as one of the top cases of Munchausen disease. I think that's Munchausen Months. But she's on the top of that list, okay? It's a fictitious disorder that a person has imposed on themselves or their loved ones. A person with this disorder takes matters into their own hands, whether somebody is sick or not. They take it in their own hands and play God. So, Gypsy's mother raked in thousands of dollars off of the sympathy that she knew that she would get having a dying child. Dee Dee put Gypsy through surgeries that she didn't need. She had to sit in that wheelchair for hours and hours upon end. Shaved her head constantly to keep up with the look of a cancer patient, which is terrible to do to such a young girl and had her on feeding tubes. She also had Gypsy act and portray a much younger child than she actually was. Um, to the public and from what Gypsy's mom told the masses, Gypsy's mind was that of a six-year-old and her mental capacity was that way due to being prematurely born. All the while, Gypsy was perfectly healthy, could walk on her own, and had no chronic conditions, not even asthma. Under a lot of stress and pressure to perform to the world, Gypsy started to formulate a plan to escape from her mom. As a teenager does, she began to talk to other boys online, and she stumbled across Nicholas here. Nicholas was 21 at the time of this murder. And in June of 2015, they planned to come together and meet for the first time. So June of 2015, Nicholas Godejohn came to Springfield and he arrived at a time where Gypsy and her mom was at a doctor's appointment. So he left. And then once he got word that they had came back and the mom was finna go to bed, he came back to the house and Gypsy snuck him in. She gave him duct tape, gloves, and a knife. With both of them understanding what those tools were going to be used for to murder Dee Dee. Go to John then stabbed Dee Dee Blanchard 17 times in her back while she slept. While the murder went down, Gypsy was hiding in a bathroom, covering her ears so that she wouldn't hear her mother scream. Directly after the murder, Gypsy and Nicholas went into her bedroom and they had some intercourse. 
before leaving the house, they took $4,000 that Gypsy knew was in Dee Dee's possession somewhere in the house that she was just saving up. Apparently, Gypsy made some alarming posts on Facebook that caught the attention of her neighbors. And shortly after Gypsy and Nicholas left, neighbors began getting concerned and they called 911. That is when Dee Dee Blanchard's body was discovered. So instantly, police was thinking since Gypsy wasn't there that she could have possibly been abducted and this could turn into a whole ransom and all these things. And, and it was possible. But boom, they found her and Nicholas the very next day in Wisconsin. Gypsy Rose pleaded guilty, sentenced to 8 to 10. She was sentenced to 10 and only did 8. And Nicholas, he took his to trial. And it was a very swift and quick trial. And he was found guilty, sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, plus 25 years. Now, these are my thoughts on that. While I do believe that it's her time to be free, you know, it's her time to be 100% free. She has been under the control of a very evil person since she was a baby. So that within itself, she deserves freedom. And, you know, to go from one prison to the next, like literally, her being in that house with her mother was a prison. Her sitting in that wheelchair was a prison. Her being such a spectacle and everything being a lie was a prison. So to go from that prison to an actual prison, you know, that would take a toll on me as well. In that certain circumstance, I'm glad she's free. But I'm not going to sit up here and say... I'm 100% for Nicholas being locked up for life if Gypsy isn't too. If we're going to say that she did God's work or the abused killed the abuser, we're not going to call Nicholas a hero? We're not going to call it, we're not going to call the actual person that took her out a hero. But we're going to call the person that set it up a hero? I'm not. And, and I'm not against her. What rubbed me the wrong way was her getting on the stand after her release against Nicholas when the only reason he knew Dee Dee was because of you. And the only reason he got certain impressions of what he needed to do and what he wanted to do for you was based off of what you said. In my personal opinion, I feel like in today's time, and we're not going to bring race into it yet, right? But in today's time, if that very same thing would have happened, the female, the, the abused would have got still a lot of time that's just like the cynthia thing where she was sex trafficked she killed him she got a lot more time than 10 years so i'm saying i just what what didn't sit right with me was her getting on a stand saying that nicholas took all of this control when he was there to do what he felt necessary to protect you. And what he did stopped the abuse. Did it not? Did it not stop the abuse? Did it not reveal all of the truths that you were scared to say out to the public? It's no way that you could have vocalized, hey, my mom is taking advantage of me, whoop de woo without her being dead. And it just exploding and blowing up. It, it's, it's no other way that could have happened. Because anybody knows that a person that is being abused, the last thing that they're going to do is tell the masses the truth. They scared. That's at no fault of her own. I'm not telling her what she should have did. No matter of fact, I am telling her what she should have did. I personally would have respected it more 
if she would have took her mother out herself. And then you get the 8 to 10 years, you get out, and you get celebrated. I think that Nicholas should get less time. Now, he might have got more time, and he might have got that certain sentence because he was 21-ish or 20, something around there, when the murder took place. He is now 29 years old. You know, he had every, every bit of a mental capacity or a conscience, whatever you want to call it, to make the right decision and to say, we can just run away. And then I can be your voice and tell everybody what is actually going on and protect you and you can be out of there. He could have made that choice, but both of y'all went along with this plan and the plan wouldn't have started without Gypsy. So to give her 8 to 10 or to give her 10 and to give him life plus 25, I don't think that's fair. I've seen a lot that says that she's a hero and she she has been through a lot and she has persevered. Yes, but I'm not going to let nobody get away with saying that it's right that he's in jail for that long for a eternity. And that's, that's how karma works, you know. You do something for somebody that they could have done themselves and it just gets you in a, a fuck ton of problems, trauma. I could tell, by the way, that he was looking at her as she was testifying just recently against him. I could tell that he was hurt by that. I would be too. Because he basically threw his life away for her. I'm not trying to say she evil. I'm not trying to say, you know, she doesn't deserve to be free. But don't try to act like he had some type of control over you. And he was, he was doing what you asked him to do and he followed through with that. The type of control that he took and the type of force that that took... You couldn't have done. Not by yourself. Stabbed 17 times. You couldn't have done that yourself. So it would have fucked me up to even get on there and say that. Like, you was being controlled ultimately by your mother. If anything, you was being controlled by your mother and then you was controlling him. And, you know, that's kind of how that goes sometimes. You get certain traits, whether, and I'm not saying Gypsy is evil like her mother, but you do get certain traits from the people that you love, even though they ain't right. Motherfuckers, parents might be selfish and they take that trait from their parents. One parent might be selfish, one parent might be considerate, but they take the, the selfish traits more than the considerate traits. It happens a lot. So I do feel like it was a certain control over Nicholas. And and to me, it wouldn't make sense to, to say, oh, he's such a dangerous person. I was under this control of him. And y'all had sex after the murder. Like, the blood wasn't even dry yet. That's what they call a thrill kill, do they not? For Nicholas... Even though he helped her in a major way. I did see the recent interview that she had where she said she regrets not talking to her father about what was going on and reaching out for help. And I would too. If I basically brought somebody in on a plan on something that I already had in motion in my mind. I would feel like that too. I would feel like I should have went to the Himalayas and the mountain of the Everest, okay? And I should have spoke up before getting somebody else entangled in my bullshit. And it's not bullshit. You, you get what I mean. Into a whole fucking murder. He threw his life away. And now, eight, nine years down the line, he got to see yet again 
you being so disloyal after he showed that's like one of the biggest signs of loyalty to some people and that's how some people's minds work if you kill for me and to protect me there's nothing else that you got to prove as far as love and loyalty he did that we can't say that she's a hero or that she accomplished X, Y, and Z, and she had a lot of help. That's something that really does not rub me the right way when it comes to this. Had to say it. So hopefully in the next coming years, we see that his sentence has been reduced a whole lot. Because my thing is, a lot of people can say, oh, if you kill once, you can kill again, right? This is the analogy that I want to make. That's a fact, right? But what you should still consider is a person that has been controlled for almost a few decades can be controlled again in different circumstances, whether that be marriage, religion, X, Y, and Z. So just as you say... A person that has killed before can kill again. A person that has been controlled before can be controlled again. When the fuck she get married? Who the fuck is that? I rest my case.